Hey art historians, Prof D here, and I'm here with my colleague, Prof Mihai, and we're here to talk about some of the enduring questions of art history. Like one of the things he I hear all the time is why is the Mona Lisa so famous? Why is it that whenever people go to Paris, they flock to see this one image that's behind this thick plexiglass wall and looks like a postage stamp from the back of the room? And actually, I remember the first time that I saw this painting, and I remember being really excited about it. It was something that I had studied in art history classes. And then I walk into the Louvre, and like, wah, wah, there's like a million people. It's so crowded. It's so hot. And you can't get close to it, and you can't really see it. Yeah, so what is it? Why is it that this work is the one that everybody goes to see? Yeah. I mean, look at these other portraits from the Renaissance. Yeah, it's there are tons of portraits of wealthy women in 16th century, 15th and 16th century Italy. So what is so special about this particular painting? I think there are like it's a combination. Absolutely. Of yeah. There are a lot of myths out there as well, but I think it has a lot to do with the publicity around the piece, the hype, the attention that it's gotten over the years. And one of the things that made it very popular is that it was removed in 1800 by Napoleon, who thought this was one of the most beautiful paintings he'd ever seen. In fact, he loved it so much that he hung it in his bedroom at his palace at Fontainebleau. Yeah, and actually I want to go back a little bit because like how do Leonardo, everybody knows Leonardo da Vinci, right? He's an Italian Renaissance painting painter. Like, how did this painting end up in France in the first place? That's right. Well, actually, Leonardo moves to France, and he dies in France. So this is how the painting gets there in the first place. Right. right. So it goes into the French Royal Collection, which today is the Louvre Museum, and it stays there until 1800 when Napoleon decides that he wants it in his private space. And also, like, I don't hold that against Napoleon. Like, I wouldn't mind having it, like, hanging above my bed. But I think the real moment happens in 1911. Yes, when an Italian who worked at the Louvre uh, steals the painting. And he goes in on a Monday when the museum is normally closed. He walks in with some other workers and he dresses up in this sort of like, you know, kind of white lab coat thing that the museum workers would wear. And he goes into the room where the Mona Lisa is hanging and he removes it from the wall and and he goes to a, another room to kind of... Yes, he takes it off the brackets and um, then he wraps yes. the piece in his coat, puts it under his arm and walks out the door. He walks out the door with the Mona Lisa wrapped in this coat and he brings it to his apartment in Paris where he lives and he keeps it in a trunk in his apartment for two years. Yes, the problem is that no one noticed the painting was missing until the following day. Mm -hmm. So it's not until the security guards come in, uh, assume at first that the work has been taken to conservation or that it's mm -hmm. being photographed. Finally, the curators come up and ask the guards where the painting's gone and it's only then, literally a day later, that they are alerted to the fact that the painting has in fact been stolen. Right, mm -hmm. and then and then he keeps it in his apartment. What's this guy's name? Vincenzo Perugia. V Vincenzo Perugia. Yes. So he, look at that mustache. Right? That's a, that's, a, that's a great early 20th century mustache right there. So he keeps it in his apartment for two years, so it's not sort of found on the black market anywhere, and he, goes to Italy, he returns to Italy where he's from, and, and his belief was that because Leonardo da Vinci was Italian, that the painting rightfully should belong in Italy, which actually is a really interesting point and something that we might want to talk about later when we talk about repatriation and the return of objects to the countries that they have been taken from. And a lot of art in Western museums has been looted throughout history. And right, absolutely. Yeah, so that's, that's another topic. But he, he eventually goes to Italy and tries to sell the Mona Lisa. To the Uffizi Gallery, which is one of the most notable museums in all of Florence. And of course, when he brings it to the curators, they know exactly what it is they're looking at. And the police very quickly follow up and have him arrested. And the painting is then returned to Paris. 
Yeah, Wait. because uh, museums, like, side note, museums are not allowed to purchase or accept stolen artworks. Right. It never is a good crime to purchase a stolen <laughs> artwork. You'll end up having to pay for it and give it back as well. So finally, um, once it returns to Paris, it goes back on view in 1913. And so you're looking at an image of the guards protecting it there at about that same time. But there's also a huge publicity campaign. And all over Paris, there are posters and signs that say, she's back, come see the Mona Lisa. So again, the hype that surrounds it, this theft, the removal of it, the fact that Napoleon has loved this work, and now that it's finally returned home to the Louvre Museum, makes it really central and incredibly popular um, in the Louvre Museum. And, and it's really popular in Europe because it's this sort of international scandal at, at the time. And as we move forward, three years later, a well-known French artist who came to New York created a kind of spoof on this work. He copied the painting and then he added these letters here at the bottom that say L-H-O-O-Q, which is kind of a play on a French phrase that means she has a hot ass. So in a sense, he sort of begs the question or provokes the idea of why is this work so famous? Is it the beauty of the piece? Can we make fun of it? And he questions in that sense the whole idea of um, the significance of this work to Western culture. Yeah, and like the artworks like the Mona Lisa have this really elevated status in society. And Duchamp, who's part of this Dada movement in art where it's a kind of irreverent, revolutionary movement where they're kind of questioning the canon, trying to disrupt art history. And he's drawn this mustache and, and then included this kind of phrase that's sort of sexual. And this kind of makes a joke of something that's almost sanctified in art history. Absolutely. In fact, the work is so special that it very quickly comes to the attention of Jackie Kennedy. Yes, Jackie Kennedy uh, pulls some diplomatic weight and is able to bring the Mona Lisa to the United States in 1963. And this is a chance for American audiences, people who perhaps will never have the opportunity to travel to Europe to see something like this. It's a chance for them to see this sort of master artwork that earlier in the century had become so famous because it had been stolen. They get to see it in person and they lined up to see it. Yeah, the numbers are quite significant. In At the National Gallery in Washington, D.C., close to 500,000 people saw it in the just one month that it was on view. And in the, at the Metropolitan Museum in New York City, over a million people saw it uh, in the very short time that it was on view there. And we can see these, these, in this image here, we can see all of these people sort of waiting in line to see it. And this is really, I think, kind of like that moment of planting the seed of the blockbuster exhibition and the Absolutely. idea that people would line up yes. to go to an art show. And and this makes me think of, I remember in the early or mid 2000s, there was an exhibition of street art at MoCA in, in Los Angeles. And at that time, people were lining up to go see it. And it was, you know, the best selling exhibition ever at MoCA. And kind of this is the predecessor. This is setting that precedent. Absolutely. It was unprecedented, the numbers of people that came to see the Mona Lisa. And of course, as recently as 2018, well-known pop artists Beyonce and Jay-Z, aka the Carters, created a video that was shot entirely in the Louvre. And it starts and ends on the image of the Mona Lisa. So the hype, the infatuation, the love of this image goes as far back as Napoleon and well into the 21st century. Yes, and in fact, we see the image used by the well-known street artist, Banksy. You can see <laughs> Miss Lisa with, is that a rocket launcher? A rocket launcher? <laughs> yes. So she's depicted here sort of as a revolutionary. And we also see this image used in memes on Twitter and other social media outlets. Yes, there are so many puns and spoofs that play off this work that it just adds to how iconic and symbolic of Western art and Western culture this image has become. Yes, yeah, so really this kind of 
the the history of the object is almost more interesting than, than the, the painting object itself. itself. Yes, <laughs> totally true. All right, thanks for coming to Art Talk. See you next time.